Hey everybody, it's Shadowstar here, and it is time for me to review the Pokemon anime Black and White Gen 5. And a lot of people regard this as the worst instance of the Pokemon anime. But does it deserve the hate? Well, in some regards, it definitely has a lot of poor qualities. But it's also got a lot of really good qualities that I wasn't expecting. I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I did, which is good. Obviously, but the, one of the biggest reasons people hate it is the quote-unquote reboot. Because there is a visible gap in time between Sinnoh and Unova. It doesn't start, it doesn't start progressing straight from Sinnoh. There's no clear indication how long it's been, and Ashla, and there, and for the first half of the series, there's practically no continuity nods, and a lot of people say Ash acts more like an idiot. Well, to be fair, Ash has always acted like an idiot, but I can see what people mean, especially in some of his first battles. Let's talk about Ash and Pikachu. A lot of people give criticism to a Pikachu's first battle against a Snivy, but I never had problem with Ash losing to Snivy. See, Zekrom weakened to Snive. Zekrom weakened to Pikachu, so really, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But after that v battle, they say Pikachu has now been fully healed, so he should be back to his normal self, right? Well, sure, he is, he does great, except in the first gym, where he loses to a Panpour, Pikachu, the P Pokemon that has recently taken down a Latios and previously a Regice, loses to a Panpour, one of the weakest water types there is. Yeah, you could see what's wrong with this picture, but what about the rest of Ash's Pokemon? Well, we've got his Pig Knight, which, it didn't do much. It's not the mighty fire type like Infernape or Charizard. It's not as forgettable as Cyndaquil. But it doesn't have that many good battles. Ash so rarely thinks about type, it's not like he uses his Pig Knight against the Grass Gym or other stuff. The only interesting episode is the episode where Pig Knight evolves because of its old trainer, who again is the same thing that happened with Charmander and Paul. Why do they like abandoned fire types so much? Oh well, we have Snivy who acts all snack stuck up, which I suppose the only notable quality is Snivy uses attract a lot of times, which Ash likes to use all the time. I don't blame him. Attract can be OP, so that's nice. You've got Oshawa who Kinda reminds me of Piplup, and naturally they start pairing Oshawott and Piplup up when Pip when Dawn comes back, but Oshawott, I kind of enjoyed him. He comes off as annoying sometimes, but I kind of enjoy Oshawott. It had some nice battles, Oshawott had some good moments, it was alright. Unpheasant, Ash's most forgettable bird. It never got to do its usual job of go look for Pokemon or go pop Team Rocket's balloon, so what did it do? Other than a fight against Skylar, nothing else. It's not like it was a not it's not like we had a Pokey Ringer competition for it to win, so yeah, Unpheasant, one of his most forgettable team members. See, Ash in this region catches way more than six Pokemon. The problem is this leads to a very unbalanced team since he doesn't truly rotate his team. He always keeps the Unovan starters with him and Pikachu, so that only leaves two slots left. So, what else is there? There's Crocodile, probably one of his strongest Pokemon. He doesn't catch it till halfway through the journey as a cro as a Crocorock, and it's strong. It has some good battles against Dragonite, another Pokemon, and a few gyms. So, I'd say the Crocodile was his ace, other than Pikachu. You know, I suppose. I mean, it's not as comparable to Infernape and Sceptile, but it's about the best you'll get. Then you've got Levani. Does anyone remember anything Levani did? I think it was in the... I think he, it participated in the bug gym, but that's about it. Yeah, half his team is forgettable. Then he got Palpatode, who, again, 
Uh, I think its only notable battle was against the Electric Gym, so at least it got to have a notable battle. That's at least something. Then you got Scraggy, a Pokemon I almost forgot to include because it's that forgettable. What did it do? Uh, oh right, it did have a good battle in one of the tournaments. That's at least one thing noteworthy. The tournaments were fun to watch, and at least it gave some more screen time to Scraggy, so that's nice. It had a rivalry with Axew. You have Baldors, which... Oh, Baldor had a good fight against Clay, so you know what? I think every Pokemon he had, it had at least one shining moment, and that's about it. The other quality is the fact that the art style has been upgraded since the previous region, and for the most part, I like it. Things look brighter, things look more colourful, Ash now has fully coloured eyes. The only downside is... For this region only, they changed it so Iron Tail now takes on a metallic colour rather than light, and I don't like the way they changed Pikachu's Iron Tail. The other thing I don't like they changed about Pikachu, early on, it learns Electro Ball and forgets Volt Tackle. One of my favourite moves Pikachu used, and they got rid of Volt Tackle. It was so epic whenever Pikachu used it, but it doesn't have it in this. He forgets Volt Tackle so quickly. Oh, it's such a shame. But what about Ash's traveling companions? Well, their goals are a lot less defined since they're not competing in contests, but they're not as bad as I originally thought, or at least Iris. Yes, I know, her catchphrase can get annoying, I will agree, but I grew to like Iris, and I still think I like Iris way more than Serena, oh trust me there. I enjoyed Iris, she had some annoying moments, but she also was such a delightful trainer, she got way good in the end, so Iris had a lot of good moments. Her Axew went from being a baby to being a Pokemon which learned to outrage in a tournament to then forgetting to do anything because it got... Then she started focusing on her other Pokemon. You got Amolga, which, as cute as it is, it barely had any time to shine. I can think of maybe a couple of battles in the ra few random tournaments it participated in. Uh, Excadrill. Excadrill had the Nimbasa tournament where it defeated Pikachu. And it was disobedient at first, a bit like Charizard. Speaking of disobedient Pokemon like Charizard, Iris, after halfway through the season, finally catches another dragon being Dragonite, and it's disobedient at first, but boy is it a badass once it starts doing stuff, and then the show practically ends, so there's nothing for her to do with it. Oh well, at least she comes back in Pokemon Journeys, apparently. But Iris... You're a lot more delightful as a character than people give you credit. You're not annoying, and I enjoy her despite her catchphrase. You know who I don't enjoy? Silen. I don't care for Silen at all. Sure, he's a good gym leader, but that's about it. I don't care for the whole Pokemon connoisseur thing. It's not a real thing. They barely define how it works. If they had defined how it works and had some proper indication on how it works, maybe we'd care a bit more. But it just comes off as dumb. Especially in a region like this. See, sometimes when he finally does do evaluations of Pokemon, you'd think, okay, this makes sense. Where could this be an applicable use? I don't know. Maybe contests. Inst you know, if this were a region like Hoenn and Sinnoh which had contests, Silent would make a contest judge. But instead, what does he do it for? Just randomly analyze random Pokemon? And then there's this stupid running gag where he's a connoisseur of basically anything. I'm a museum connoisseur. I'm a train connoisseur. Oh, shut up, Silent. At least Iris lampshades it, but lampshading an annoying joke can only get you so far. But at least it's nice to know that one character is on with me on this. Oh, well. There's another controversial decision, but I actually don't mind it. It's the revamp of Team Rocket. And I don't just mean Jesse and Dames, I mean Team Rocket as a whole, but first let's talk about them. As I said, they got promoted after Sinnoh, and boy howdy, the day get a change. For one thing, starting in black and white, Team Rocket is no longer obligated to appear in every goddamn episode, and they're nowhere near as goofy for the first half of the show. They act like a proper threat, they don't blast off, they don't have Wobbuffet, they wear black uniform for a while, and anytime they do show up, 
it's either to set up a major plot point or to participate in a major plot point. Team Rocket, both Jesse and James and the actual team, act like Team Rocket should. We get them acting more like the villainous team of the region than the actual villainous team of the region. They catch some new Pokemon, they have a new style, and they have a few arcs, like the Nimbasa train arc, which was really fun to watch, the forces of nature, Giovanni actually shows up, we actually get to see Giovanni confront Ash, the, fir the only time he's done this out of the one Pokemon Returns movie, so honestly, and, and it's the first time he would have seen him since he forgot in that movie, but yeah, and that arc was really good. We get the Giovanni arc where he steals Malawetta and he tries to control the world and Team Rocket is actually being useful. It's nice to see Jesse and James being useful. But after that, they start to downgrade. In a, well, not downgrade, but they start to return to form through the Team Plasma arc and then through the actual and then through the last handful of episodes they start to slide back into the way they used to be the goofy team rocket and you know the fun thing as much as i loved the badass take charge team rocket i kind of miss the fun team rocket you know it was fun to you know as things finally settled back into the way they were near the end of the season i was like oh you know what I miss this. I miss our fun team rocket. But I enjoyed this brief take that they had of being really cool. And that's the thing. I wouldn't have wanted it any longer, but I enjoyed it while it was there. And that's the important thing. Team Rocket were enjoyable for a whole different reason. The only sad part is there's no continuity nods, but hey, we don't know how long it's been since, you know, so it's a shame that when stuff happens, like Dawn showing up, that they don't, Team Rocket doesn't acknowledge Dawn or interact with Dawn or, you know, doesn't mention her formal contest rival, but oh well, continuity nods be damned, I guess. We, the, the villainous team finally does show up, two-thirds of the way into the show, and rather than have epic foreshadowing like Team Galactic, no, they're relegated to a handful of episodes near the end, and that's it. It was an interesting episode, handful of episodes. We got to see N, Colress made for a good villain, more so than Getsus. I enjoyed their plan, and Luca got to show up again. That was fun. Luca gets to show up again like they had in previous ones, which is great. I enjoyed Looker sh getting showing up. I enjoyed the continuity nods. I enjoyed Looker showing up, seeing Team Rocket, and saying, "Ha! You can help us, just like you did with Team Galactic." That was fun. I love that. I enjoyed the Team Plasma arc. It's just a shame they didn't do much with it. I do know that they had a whole different plan for Team Rocket and Team Gal Team Plasma, but stuff happened. But I still enjoyed what we saw, but also it wasn't as great as it could have been. But it was still cool seeing the bit where they were controlling Pokemon, especially Ash's Pokemon and all that. So that was great. But what about Ash's gym battles? Well, like I said, Pikachu loses to a Pampore, and everyone claims, oh, the gym battles in Unova aren't good. I wholeheartedly disagree. Yes, there are two battles which absolutely suck one of them being the first where pikachu loses to a panpour which is stupid but the rest except for one other is great his battle against lenora was pretty damn good and enjoyable we had the bug on bug fight which was also enjoyable then you've got the battle against elisa where ash thinks oh i know Palpitoda is going to be so good against electric types, I'll just bring one Pokemon to a three-on-one match, because Ash is a grade A moron sometimes. And then he has to run out, get his new Pokemon, and run back in. How does that work? They should have, no, you only brought one Pokemon, that should count as a loss. You shouldn't be able to run back to the Pokemon Center and grab your missing Pokemon. That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Oh well, the rest were pretty good. Baldor versus Clay was fun to watch. On pheasants bird on bird fight was fun. Crocodile fighting an ice type. Again, Ash likes to trump those weird ice types. Again, Crocodile can beat an ice type, but Pikachu can't beat a Pampor. What the fuck's up with that? And then you get Roxy, which I absolutely loved. I'm a big fan of black and white too, so seeing that was great. And I was wondering how they were gonna, you know, just try to portray her. And 
I really loved Roxy. She's so fun. I love the voice they gave her. They do this cool thing where they let Ash use all six of his Pokemon against three of her Pokemon, and yet she still puts up a huge fight, and I absolutely love it. Roxy was my favorite gym to watch. So, if there's no contests, and there's three seasons, you might think, oh, there's lots of filler. Not really. The pacing for the most part, is really well done, because even when there's no gym, they cover it up with things like tournaments, and there's lots of rivals. <sighs> Every so often, we have a tournament. There's about three or four of them, and they're all entertaining to watch. Quite frankly, they're more entertaining to watch than the actual Pokemon League itself. So... There's a lot of rivals. Let's start with Trip. On first glance, you'd think, oh god, it's a poor man's Paul. And quite frankly, for the first handful of episodes, that's how he acts. Then he kind of steps aside. Then he has a great battle in the one of the tournament arcs where he faces off against the champion. And then we have the Pokemon League where Ash faces him in the league in the first round. You know, when you started this season, you would have thought, ah, Trip's a big rival. We're going to have a big fight in the Pokemon League. No. We battled Trip in the first battle in a one-on-one, -on -one, and he loses pretty quickly. <laughs> so much for that rivalry, Trip. I guess you weren't that important. Then you've got Bianca, who, she was all right. We had this stupid running gag where she always ran into Ash and knocked him into adjacent water. That was a dumb gag, but she had some alright battles. She had some alright battles in the tournament, especially with her Embor, and Minchino is cute. Then you've got Burgundy. Ah, she's supposed to be a rival for Silent, you know, if they had definable goals of being a connoisseur. But it's just stupid. She's a, she comes off as annoying sometimes and declares herself Silent's rival. The only enjoyable thing is I like the way that Silent just doesn't care. She acts like she's this big, tough rival, Silent, but she never beats him. And whenever she says, I'm your big rival, Silent just doesn't care. I love that part. That's about the only enjoyable thing. And then that, and you can make the joke theory that, huh, she's got purple hair, she speaks with a French accent. Is she related to Fantina? I don't know, that's just one of my many joke theories, I guess. Then you got Georgia, a person who claims to be a dragon buster, but was a bit generation too early. If she came around the next generation, she could have used fairies, not just ice types. She's Iris's rival, per se, but they only show up a handful of times, and most of the time they don't battle. She's even less enjoyable than Burgundy, but at least her bear tick was fun to watch, but she almost never beats Iris, and when she does, it's not against a dragon type, so who cares? You've got Stefan, who actually is one of the more interesting rivals, in a sense that he actually has a good battle in the league, he wins one of the actual tournaments, and this is the one thing I love about the tournaments. Because they're not contests, or Pokemon leagues, or something like that, the outcome is way less predictable. It's fun. You get to see, because they get all the characters together, and you get to see matchups that you wouldn't normally see. You get to see random matchups. Maybe it's Trip versus Silent. Maybe it's like Iris versus Burgundy. Characters who aren't even the rivals of each other get to face off. They last for a handful of episodes, do a good way to take up time, you get a lot of enjoyable battles out of them, and it's fun to see all the different character interactions. I enjoyed these tournaments, and I suppose they're about the closest thing you're going to get to a contest, and most of them were more enjoyable than the League. And, yeah, but speaking of the League, we have Cameron. Oh god, it's... If you thought Ash was a moron, we've said, right, take Ash's intelligence, and just... Smash it down. And that's when you get Cameron. Someone so stupid. He's like, I don't even know. He didn't even know there was eight. You needed eight gym badges. He brought five Pokemon to a six on six battle. This is the person Ash loses to in the league. Oh my god. Let me point a picture. Not only does Ash lose to Cameron. Even though Cameron had five Pokemon and Ash had six. He also used had two different instances in that battle where he had a quick knockout because he had a quad weakness. So he barely used any of his Pokemon, but he wins. This guy's a grade A moron every single time. The only redeeming quality is he has a Riolu, and that's adorable, and that's the only quality you can have. 
then you got Virgil, who seems like a great idea for a trainer. He's an EV trainer. He has EV in all of the forms. One side note I thought is this was just around the time that they were releasing information for X and Y. So this would have been a cool way for them to debut Sylveon, sort of like how they debuted Blaziken with Harrison. But sadly, that doesn't happen. That doesn't take away from the fact that he's a cool trainer. And prior to the league, you would have thought, ha, huh, this is a guy who's going to beat Ash. And how cool would it have been? I'm not annoyed that Ash loses the league. I'm annoyed that Ash loses the league to a grade A moron. Ash could have beaten Cameron and then lost to Virgil, and I would have been happy. You could have had a final great fight between Ash and Pikachu. I mean, Eevee and Pikachu, and it would have been a great fight, but none of that happens. Ash and Virgil never fight. It's such a shame to waste such a cool character. Speaking of cool characters, it's the obligatory, here comes a returning female companion. Dawn returns this time alongside Cynthia, and she's around for a lot longer. She's around through the duration of the Malawetta arc when Malawetta is befriending Ash and then she participates in one of the tournaments and we lo get a lot of good moments. It's fun to see Dawn back, it's fun to see all her old Pokemon again, you get to see fun interactions like um, Piplup and Oshawott. I love the bit where Oshawott scale drop jumps, drops on the floor and Pachirisu just runs off and kicks it far away and it's hilarious. Oh well, it's fun to see Dawn back. It was great seeing her in a tournament. We got to have a fun battle between Mamoswine and Dragonite, which is a really good battle, which is great, because Mamoswine, quite frankly, needed some more good battles. It's a shame that its best battle was not in Sinnoh. And it's fun parallel, too, because Mamoswine used to be disobedient and cost Dawn a fight, just like Dragonite cost Iris the tournament. So it's a nice parallel. I enjoyed that. So it was great to see her back. And there's one last thing you know Uva excels at. Although the bridge from Sinnoh to Unova was literally non-existent, the bridge from Unova to Carlos was. Okay, first off, although the pacing was great, the last 20 episodes were quite frankly literally filler except the last few. Ash does nothing, there's no league, there's no tournament, the leagues are wrapped up, there's villains are all wrapped up. We just travel around the Declar Islands to get a bunch of filler episodes that feel like they could be out of the Orange Islands and Team Rocket's back to normal. But I do like we're bridging our way back into Carlos when we meet a character called Alexa who has a Helioptile and a Go-Goat and Noivern and mentions Carlos and mentions the gyms and oh, it's just good to feel like a proper progression. You can see it's the lot and quite frankly this is the last time in the anime where we have a proper smooth transition from region to region. We have Unova to Carlos. Ash learns about it and he goes there. It's great. I will say that the way Silent and Iris were written out was very rushed, and it's a shame, but it's nice. And I, again, the last transition is Team Rocket smoothly transitions from being badass to back into their more fun, goofy selves, with still a, just a slight hint of that development they had. And you symbolize that by saying, hey, guess what? Wobbuffet's back, and we'll be having Wobbuffet in the new re next region. But all in all... I feel like Unova's a, a series that just got better as it went along. It had a few messy gym battles, and Ash was an idiot at first, but I enjoyed it as it went on. The tournament arcs were great, the league was messy, oh god, it's one of the worst leagues besides Kanto. But the tournament arcs were great, most of the gym battles were great, I enjoyed Iris more than people said they do, I enjoyed the different take they took on Team Rocket, but I'm glad they're back to normal, and like I said, I love the transition, you know me, I love the la transition from one region to the next, and this is the last time it happens, later ones just have an abrupt ending where they end and then we just skip and he's suddenly in the new region, but this was great, I enjoyed the transition, and... I enjoyed Unova more than I thought I did. But what about next? Next time is Carlos, and how do I feel about that? I've not seen a lot of Carlos, but I've heard a lot about it, as we all know. But we'll worry about what I feel about Carlos next time. Anyway, I enjoyed Unova more than I thought I did, so I'll see you next time for my Carlos review of the Pokemon anime, and other things as well. See you next time, guys.